Today we are going to make this tree block and bird block. They are both stitch and flip, quilt as you go, with a little bit of piecing. The tree block has a bit of crazy patchwork, which is really fun and great for using up scraps. You may think that the bird block looks a bit complicated with the little pieces, but once you see it come together, you'll find that it isn't too difficult at all. Welcome back to Pattonful TV. I'm Monica Poole, and every week I try to post a video about sewing and quilt as you go. I work on this channel with my daughter and we love making these videos for you where we give lots of hints and tips to help you improve your sewing skills. We have a website with lots of PDF patterns, we do a weekly blog post and we also have a private Facebook group. So feel free to check them out because we'd really love your support. Here is a visual of what you will need. The cutting instructions are for two blocks because it's more economical this way and I'll explain why soon. Take a screenshot or head to our blog for the measurements. For the tree, I'm using lots of green scraps from my stash. As usual, my batting is cut smaller than the batting and is centered on the wrong side of the backing square to give me a half inch gap all around the edge. This is because I'm going to be joining them together with my easy cover strip method on the back. If you haven't seen this method before, you can check it out in this video here. So back to why this block is more economical to make with two with the same background fabric. And this is because of the way that the two five and three quarter inch by six and three quarter inch rectangles are cut to make the side edges of the tree. Now this part is important. Place them with the wrong sides facing and measure an inch and a half across the top short end and an inch and a half across the bottom, measuring from the opposite corner. Connect the marks with your ruler and cut. This will give you a pair of side pieces for one block and a pair for another block. To mark up the block, first of all, mark a line that is an inch and a half away from the fabric on all four side edges of the block. This is the top and this is the bottom. From the bottom, mark a line that is two and a half inches up, then mark a center vertical line. Then mark two and a half inches on either side of the center vertical line on the two and a half inch line. Then connect them with the center line at the top horizontal point. This is our tree shape. Now mark lines that are a quarter inch outside of the tree lines. So now we have our block marked up, let's grab our scraps. You need to find a piece that will fit across the bottom edge of the tree. Position the piece on the two and a half inch line, making sure that it extends about a quarter inch past our outer tree line. At the machine, I have a neutral color thread on top and in the bobbin, making sure that it ties in with the backing fabric. I have a straight stitch with a length of three. I've set an automatic tie off, and if you don't have this function, just do a little reverse stitch at the beginning and end of each row of stitching. I have a size 80 quilting needle, and I'm using my standard foot with the needle moved over so that I have a quarter inch seam from the edge of the foot to the needle. With my first strip positioned, take another piece, making sure that it's bigger than the outer tree line, and place it right sides together. Rather than making it straight, to add interest, I'm going to place it on an angle. Now stitch starting and finishing level with the inner tree line. This is so that our stitches don't cross over and look messy on the back of the block. Trim away the excess fabric and flip the piece over to the right side. You can just finger press or iron each strip as you go. Repeat this process to stitch and flip pieces all the way up to the top of the tree. I'm placing each strip on an angle to make sideways wedge pieces. If you like, you can mark dots that are level with the inner tree line and sew from dot to dot. Flip the piece over to the right side and if it's a bit long, then roughly trim it a bit bigger than the outer tree line. Then flip it back to trim the excess away from the seam. If the cut off pieces are big enough, I'll save them for a crumb quilt. So with your own Crazy Patrick tree, you can really do whatever you want and position your pieces however you like and use as many pieces as you want. Just get creative and have fun.
And now I'm going to sew on my last piece, making sure that I have a generous quarter inch extending past the top marked line. And here I am saving my scraps and putting them into my little scrap jar. Carefully press the crazy patchwork tree and remark those outer tree lines. Just peek under the fabric to make sure that you are marking those lines accurately. You'll see that I marked a dot at the top of the tree that is level with the top line and the center line. Now take the side tree pieces and place them on both sides of the tree, making sure that you have a pair. Place one piece right sides together with the tree, aligning the edge with the marked line and centering it so that you have an even amount extending past the top and bottom marked lines on the block. Mark a dot that aligns with the top dot at the top of the tree and mark a dot at the bottom that is a quarter inch up from the marked line. Sew from dot to dot, being careful not to stretch the fabric because it's on a slight bias grain. Flip the piece over, making sure that it extends past the top marked line and the side marked line. You'll see that you'll have some extra fabric on the bottom edge and that's okay because we will trim that away later. If everything is okay, trim away the excess fabric. To make sure that your fabric will extend a quarter inch past the marked line, you can actually mark an extra line that is a quarter inch out from our inch and a half border line. Sew the other piece on in the same way, but this time starting from the bottom of the tree. To make sure that your tree will have a perfect point, mark a dot that is in line with the top center dot of the tree and mark your dot that is a quarter inch from the bottom edge of the tree. Sew from dot to dot. Flip the piece over and check that it fits. Make sure that the point of your tree is running level with the top inch and a half line. If everything is okay, trim away the excess fabric and give your block a press. Now it's time to piece together the tree trunk. So take the smaller background rectangles and the trunk piece and join them with the right sides facing, taking a quarter inch seam. Oh, and that little green piece is my leader. It stops my fabric from being chewed when I start sewing. Press the seams in towards the trunk. Now let's sew it onto the bottom of the tree. To make sure that it is centered, fold it in half and finger crease the edge. Place it with the right side facing down and align the crease with the center marked line and mark your dots, then sew from dot to dot. Flip, making sure that the bottom edge meets the lower line. Trim away the excess fabric and press. Now to sew on the side borders. To make sure that they will be straight, remark a line on the side edge that is inch and a quarter away from the backing fabric. You really only need to do this at the top and bottom and do the same on the other side. Place a side border right sides together with the block, aligning the edge with the previously marked lines. Mark your dots and sew from dot to dot. Trim away the excess fabric and repeat the process for the other side of the block. borders to the right side and press. To make sure that the top and bottom borders will be straight, once again mark a line that is an inch and a quarter away from the top edge of the backing fabric and do the same on the bottom edge. So on the top and bottom borders using the marked lines to ensure that they will be straight. This time you can sew from edge to edge of the block. Trim away any excess fabric and give the block a final press. Turn the block over to the back and trim it to the same size as the backing fabric. I will double check that all my blocks are the same size before I join my quilt together. This is what it looks like from the back. All I have to do is trim the threads and you'll see that my stitching lines don't cross over. And here is my finished scrappy tree block. If you're joining in with our free quilt to go along, then you'll need to make two.
Now onto the bird block. This is the first sample that I made. I decided to change it because I found that from a distance the yellow beak and legs didn't really stand out and I had so many attempts at designing this bird block that I ran out of the background fabric so I decided to go with a pink background fabric. This is what you will need to make one bird block. Take a screenshot or head to our blog for the measurements. These large squares here are cut once on the diagonal so I'm going to save these extra triangles for a second bird block. And here's a tip, if your batting is creased you can press it flat with your backing fabric on top. This works well for cotton and bamboo batting so make sure that you test a small sample first. So in just the same way as the tree block I have the batting centered on top of the backing square so that I have the half inch gap all the way around the edge and I've held them together with a light application of quilt basting spray. To mark up your block, this is the top and this is the bottom. First of all, mark a line that is one and a quarter inches down from the top edge of the backing fabric, then another line that is three and a quarter inches up from the bottom edge, and a line that is four and a quarter inches in from the left side edge, and another that is two and a quarter inches in from the same edge. This is for a left facing bird. To prepare the block, Position the triangle bird wing level with the four and a quarter inch line and the lower horizontal line like this. Hold in place with a pin and set aside while we piece together the legs and tail section. So lay out the two and a half inch by three inch background piece, the legs with the one inch by two and a half inch piece in the middle and the two and a half inch by four inch on the other side and join them with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the seams away from the bird legs because it will be too bulky if you tried to press them in the other way. Take the bird tail piece and draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Place it on the end of the longer background piece like this and stitch on the marked line. I like to sew slightly outside the marked line because it ensures that when I fold the corner of the square over it will meet the corner of the background piece with ease. Press to check then trim a quarter inch away from the stitching line. Now take an inch and a half background square and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. Place it on the corner of the tail triangle like this and stitch in the same way. Press and trim in the same way. And here's the leg and tail section. Now pop that aside while we make the beak section. Take the one and a half inch by four and a half inch and the one and a half inch by one and three quarter inch background pieces and the square for the bird's beak and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. Place the square right sides together with the top right hand corner of the larger background piece and stitch slightly outside the marked line. Press the corner over, trim the excess. Now join the piece right sides together with the smaller rectangle taking a quarter inch seam allowance. Here's our beak, now press the seam up. Now we have the beak and the leg and tail section. So let's stitch and flip the bird block. Take the one and a half inch bird body fabric piece and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. Place it with the right side facing down and align it with the 90 degree corner like this. So that our stitches don't cross over and look messy on the back, we're going to start and finish every row of stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of the underneath fabric. So mark dots as a reminder to keep you on track. I have my machine set up in the same way as I did for the tree block and now I'm going to stitch slightly outside the diagonal line, starting every row with a tie off or a little reverse stitch. Press the corner over to meet the underneath corner and if all is well, trim away the excess fabric trimming a quarter inch away from the stitching line. Now take the bird body rectangle and place it right sides together with the wing like this, making the straight edges level. Mark a dot that is a quarter inch up from the bottom edge and a dot that is a quarter inch away from the underneath triangle corner. Sew from dot to dot and flip. You'll know that your quarter inch seam allowance is correct if the fabric meets this line. Now press. Take the one inch by two and a half inch background rectangle and place it right sides together with the top of the bird body. Mark your quarter inch dots and sew from dot to dot. Flip and press. Now take the two one and a half inch squares and place one at the bottom of the bird body and one at the top like this. Mark diagonal lines from corner to corner, then mark the quarter inch dots and sew from dot to dot.
flip, press and trim. The triangle should meet the marked lines. My one is a bit out but will be okay because it will be caught in the seam. Now take the background triangle and place it right sides together with the wing section like this. Mark your quarter inch dots and sew from dot to dot. Trim away the excess fabric, then flip and press. Make sure that the side of the triangle is one and a quarter inches away from the side edge and that it just covers the top line. Now take the big section. To ensure that the big line's up in the right place, mark a dot that is a quarter inch in from the seam at the top of the beak and a dot that is a quarter inch in from the bird body at the point where the ruler meets the diagonal seam. Take a pin and push it up through the dot on the beak, then down into the dot on the body, then continue pinning the pieces together like this. Make sure that the pieces are level at the bottom edge. It might be a bit longer at the top, but that's okay. Mark the dot at the bottom that is a quarter inch away and a dot at the top. So from dot to dot, Flip the bird beak section over to the right side and check that it's okay and press. Now let's sew on the leg and tail section. This piece should be the same size as the bottom section of the bird and this one is easy to sew on because nothing has to match up. So mark your dots and sew from dot to dot. I like to adjust and lay the seams flat as I sew. Flip and press. The bird looks great and I'm very happy with the fabric selection this time. Now to sew on the borders. Do this in the exact same way as a tree block, so remember to remark those one and a quarter inch lines to ensure that your borders will be straight. Press, trim, and here's our bird block. So if you're joining in with our free quarter to go along, you will need to make two bird blocks. So we've now finished all of the blocks for our free quilt as you go along. If you missed any, you'll find them on our website, on our weekly blog post, and you'll also find them on a playlist on our YouTube channel. So in the next video, we're going to join all of our blocks together. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.